Governor, thank you for taking time to talk to us. Good to be with you. Thank you. When I spoke to you earlier this year, you said you were thinking about running for president. Have you made a decision? Are you running? I have made a decision, and my decision is I'm going to run for president of the United States. While the formal announcement will be later in April in Bentonville, uh, I wanted to make clear that to you, Jonathan, I am going to be running. And the reason, uh, as I've traveled the country for six months, I hear people talk about the leadership of our country, and I'm convinced that people want leaders that appeal to the best of America and not simply appeal to our worst instincts. And that inspires me when I see everyday Americans just saying, give us good leadership, give us common sense, consistent conservatism, and optimism about our great country. And uh, that inspires me, and I believe I can be that kind of leader for the people of America. Now, you've got a lot of experience. You've been a prosecutor, you've been a member of Congress, you've been a governor, you've been the director of the DEA. But most people outside Arkansas don't know who you are. How do you break through? Well, a lot of hard work and good messaging, but I've spent some time in Iowa, and I love the response that I get there. Uh, and so it's still about retail politics in many of these states. And also, this is one of the most unpredictable political environments that I've seen in my lifetime. And so my message of experience, of consistent conservatism, of hope uh, for our future, and solving problems that face Americans, uh, I think that that resonates. And so uh, I want to campaign, and uh, whenever I make the final announcement, I'll be everywhere, and I think it's a plan that can work in this environment. And how does the indictment of Donald Trump by the Manhattan DA change this race? Well, that adds to the unpredictability of it. And I think it's a sad day for America that we have a former president that's indicted. Uh, and so it's a great distraction. But at the same time, we can't set aside uh, what our Constitution requires, which is electing a new leader for our country, just because we have uh, this uh, side uh, controversy and criminal charges that are pending. And so we've got to press on, and the American people are going to have to separate uh, what the ideas are for our future, uh, going to talk about border security and the economy. We have to talk about those. We have to talk about the leadership of America in the world whenever you have Russia and China taking advantage of any weakness that America shows. So we can't be sidetracked for a year and a half. You suggested recently that if Trump were to get indicted that he should drop out of the race. Do you believe that now that he's been indicted, should he drop out? Well, I do, and for a couple reasons. I mean, first of all, the office is more important than any individual person. And so uh, for the sake of the office of the presidency, I do think that's too much of a sideshow and distraction, and he needs to be able to concentrate uh, on uh, his due process, and there is a presumption of innocence. But the second reason is, Throughout my eight years as governor and as a political leader, I've always said that uh, people don't have to step aside from public office if they're under investigation. But if it reaches the point of criminal charges that have to be answered, the office is always more important than a person. And so there's some consistency there. And I do believe uh, if, if we're looking at the presidency and the future of our country, then uh, we don't need that distraction. And, he needs to be able to concentrate on the legal issues that he faces. And he should step aside and no longer run. Well, he should, but at the same time, we know he's not. And there's not any constitutional requirement. And so uh, he's going to pursue, and I understand that, but I stated my principles and belief and how uh, I think it should be handled. But he's going to pursue on, and so uh, he's going to be a candidate. And I think ultimately the voters are going to have to decide this. And I'm not supportive of Donald Trump. I want to provide an alternative, but I'm happy if the voters make that decision and choice. Uh, I don't support, uh, I don't like the idea of the charges from what I've seen uh, coming out of New York, uh, but the process has got to work. And we've got to have respect for our criminal justice system, but also for the Office of Presidency. Do you trust this process in New York? Do you think he can get a, a fair trial, a fair hearing in New York? Well, the important thing is that the grand jury found probable cause. And that's the standard for any criminal charges in our society. And then the presumption of innocence follows you. And then there's a trial and uh, the determination of guilt or innocence. That's the American system. Thousands of people face that. Some are found not guilty. Some are found guilty. But it's the American system. And so uh, we don't 
while we might disagree with what's happening, we don't want to erode confidence in our entire criminal justice system uh, simply because uh, we don't like uh, the beginning parts of the case. And what about the way Trump has talked about this? I mean, obviously, there are just some vicious personal attacks that he has made uh, on Alvin Bragg. He's uh, called him an animal. He's called him worse than that. Um, and he has said that this will bring death and destruction to America. Well, let's rephrase this, because we don't want uh, the next 18 months to be focused simply on Donald Trump and his legal issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, Donald Trump says a lot of things, and they don't always appeal to the best of America. And so I'd rather focus on what uh, our future is about and how we can solve problems and how we can come together as Americans. What about the fundamentals of the case? Put aside the, the legal issues here. The idea of hush money for a porn star to conceal an alleged affair. Uh, Does some of this end up making the evangelical voters who supported Trump so strongly in the past think twice about supporting him again? Well, let's look at the three different investigations. One is the hush money out of New York. Secondly, it is the uh, request and pressure for votes out of Georgia. And the third one, of course, is the mishandling of classified documents in Mar-a-Lago. Mm -hmm. Those are three very serious investigations. You might say one of them doesn't showcase anything, but when you look at all three of them combined, it should give Americans pause. When you ask about the evangelical community, uh, I'm part of that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I believe that uh, the evangelical community understands that we need to have a leader uh, that can distance themselves from uh, some of the bad instincts that drive Mr. Trump. And I hope that we can do that in the future. Well, why is it his support from that community been so resilient? Because this is not the first time we've seen bad behavior from Donald Trump. Well, I, I think you have to look at the evangelical community. And I think they understand that uh, America needs to move in a, direct, in a different direction. And so I think that is the case. I'm very optimistic that the evangelicals, who will play a very key role in this election and the decision of who's going to be our nominee, that they're going to look for alternatives uh, to the former vice president, former president. I think that is exactly the case. And so I'm optimistic that they're going to take a fresh look at all the candidates. And uh, they're going to look at who can lead our country well, who's going to have an optimistic view of America, and also who's going to meet their issues concerning the family and our pro-life values. And, uh, and so I think it'll be a new contest this year and it's not going to be tied to how they have supported candidates in the past. You recently said that uh, your lane is the non-Trump lane as opposed to the anti-Trump lane. Uh, what, what, what do you mean by that? Well, it means that I'm providing an alternative uh, to uh, the former president, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And I think we need an alternative and choices in that. Now, when I say non-Trump, I want, I want to be able to speak to the Trump voters. I want to be able to speak to all of the party and say, uh, this is the leadership that I want to provide. And I think that we need to have border security. I think we need to have a strong America. I think we need to spend less at the federal level. These are the values that I represent. So what is your pitch to that segment of the party? And it's a big one that really likes Donald Trump. <clears throat> and, and they think that he's been unfairly attacked. And they want him back. A lot of them think he won the last time. What, what, what's your pitch to those voters? Well, you speak the truth, you speak out of conviction, and you speak about your own conservative record. And most of these people that you're speaking of are patriotic Americans, that they want freedom in their lives, uh, they want to have less government intrusion, they want to have a growing economy, they want to have uh, an America that uh, meets the needs of, of their families and provides the opportunities for the future. Well, that's the message that resonates with me that I accomplished as governor of Arkansas and that America can accomplish again. So uh, I think that we have to take that uh, message to them. And uh, sure, we're not going to win all of those, but I think there's many that want to have a, a future that is not filled with trauma, but is filled with optimism about America. And you think you can get those hardcore Trump voters, or at least some of them? Well, well you're going to compete for them. And uh, whenever you look at uh, winning a campaign, 
you got to find your slice, you got to find your votes, and I hope that we can take some of those. And I think down the road that uh, that support will diminish uh, for Donald Trump as you look at the future and, uh, and look at the challenges that he faces. And, uh, and whenever you look at how we're going to be on the world stage and who's going to lead us, it needs to be somebody different uh, from President Biden and his policies. Uh, so who's that going to be? And I think uh, my record, my consistent conservatism is one option I hope they'll look at. Chris Christie, speaking in New Hampshire recently, said that the key is Republicans need to be fearless in taking on Donald Trump. That does not seem to be the case with, with, with a lot of Republicans, including a lot of potential Republican presidential candidates, who are reluctant to criticize him almost at all. Well, I think that, uh, I think that sets me apart for one reason. Mm -hmm. uh, while uh, I want to present my positive image and uh, view of America and our future, at the same time, I'm going to distinguish uh, my views and how I would lead from the other candidates, and that would include uh, former President Trump. And so uh, I, Chris Christie's voice is important. I hope he continues to hammer away at uh, his view of America. But I don't think you're going to find anybody bashful uh, in the Republican primary. Uh, if you get in, you're going to fight for those votes, and part of fighting for those votes is to distinguish yourself from the other candidates. I'll do that, and others will as well. well I mean, look at how candidates and potential candidates have reacted to the indictment. Uh, I mean, they've, they've rallied to Trump's defense, effectively. Well, that sets me Not up. you. It sets that, you apart. Not you. Well, and that's part of it. You set yourself apart. You say, uh, this is what I offer. Uh, this is who I am. And uh, I hope that that uh, resonates. I know there's going to be some that say, I should be tougher uh, on the prosecutor. I should be uh, tougher on the unfairness of this. I've expressed my view that I wouldn't bring those charges if I was a prosecutor. But let's let the system work. And what I don't want to do as a leader is to undermine everything that is good about America, which is our criminal justice system. That's what sets us apart uh, from China. That's what sets us apart from Mexico. Our system works. And let's don't undermine that every day. I mean, there are a lot of Republicans attacking that judicial system and that legal system right now. And I'm different. If Donald Trump manages to win the nomination again, becomes the Republican candidate for president, will you support him? Well, I think the question comes up about the debates and what yeah. the rules of the debates are. Uh, but uh, I'm running because I believe uh, that I am the right time for America, the right candidate for our country and its future. And uh, I shouldn't hinge upon uh, anything else. But you couldn't see yourself supporting Trump again. I don't believe he should be the next leader of our country. What do you make of Ron DeSantis? What, what do you make of him as a leader? Well, I think he's done... Uh, uh, an effective job in Florida. Uh, obviously, their economy is strong. People are moving there. So I love what uh, our fellow governors have done, and that includes Ron DeSantis. What about the, the emphasis that he's put on um, divisive social issues? Well, uh, there's a uh, large segment of uh, America that is concerned about the cultural direction of our country. And I share that concern. I've been engaged in these battles uh, for since the days of Ronald Reagan and campaigning for him. And so our culture is important. I think the question is, how do you move our culture in the right direction? And I believe that the greatest impact on our culture is through our communities, our individuals, our houses of worship, and the impacts that they have. And so uh, we've got to stop this repression of conservative viewpoints on our college campuses. Uh, we've got to uh, make sure our federal government is not pushing a leftist social agenda down on the states and in our businesses. Now, how you resolve those issues is a, is a debate, uh, but I think there is a legitimate concern of the American people, and I share that concern. And, and you've also said consistently government under a conservative philosophy should be restrained. DeSantis has been quite assertive. Well, I do believe in the limited role of government, and whenever you look at a concern, you have to debate is this something we need to pass a law and tell business what to do? Or should we stay out of and let business, as we have historically done in our country, uh, run their place of business as long as uh, they're not violating uh, some uh, fundamental uh, principle of fairness and, and safety in the workplace? And so there is some differences of view, absolutely. Uh, you know, the legislature supported him in, in many instances, but 
I think we as conservatives need to stop and say, is this the role of government uh, to tell business what to do? Because that's the tool of the left. The left wants to say uh, government needs to step in and, and tell you you've got to invest in ESG. You've got to invest in, in green energy. Well, I don't like government telling them uh, what they should do uh, on the left, and I don't think we ought to use the same tool on the right. Okay, just a little final question. Um, Donald Trump has got his support in this party, no question, and we several Republicans like you, now the latest to get into this race. Is there a concern that the anti-Trump vote and the non-Trump vote will be divided and Trump will go ahead and be able to win? Well, let's see how Is there many... a concern of having too many candidates? Sure, and a lot of people express that. Yeah. And uh, I don't think it'll be like 2016 when you had 16 candidates in there. You know, the best guess is you might have eight. Uh, which is not too many, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's really important that uh, the American voters have options and see whose messages resonates with the voters and the direction we want to go in our country. So I don't think that's a problem, but it is important as we go along that we all self-evaluate. Uh, are we catching on? Are we winning? Uh, are the voters responding to this? Uh, and, and I think it will narrow nat naturally as you go through the course of Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. So it's too early to tell, uh, but uh, I don't think we should fear candidates getting in. In fact, uh, I hope that we do have candidates that will showcase what they've done. Uh, let's have a debate. We can contrast our differences, and that's what American democracy is about, is letting people really make a decision and help be part of the decision for our future. All right, Governor Hutchinson, you made some you made some big news here. You're running for president. Thank you for taking time to talk to us about it. Thank you, John. Great to be with you.